team, as well as the squad's close relationship with one another, but sadly, despite the celebrations, it seems there's still an element of hate going on behind the scenes. In fact, during the group stages of the Euros, the England team were inundated with over 2,000 abusive messages, including explicit racist posts. TV presenter Lindsay Russell has been exploring why this behaviour still exists within the so-called beautiful game, as she meets some of the organisations trying to stop it. My role as a Blue Peter presenter over the years has involved many wild and wonderful challenges, including training as a football referee over a number of weeks, something I was really excited to do. But what I soon discovered was a darker side to football. Each week I received abuse from the sidelines, from the players on the pitch and even from the fans watching the game. And a lot of the time it was sexist and misogynistic. And to be honest, it was unrelenting. It gave me a brief taste of the sort of abuse happening right across football every day. Whether it's racist, homophobic or sexist, the problem seems to be getting worse. Reporting. In April, a coalition of English football's governing bodies held a four-day social media boycott to protest against racism and other forms of online abuse. High-profile players, team managers, TV presenters and pundits got involved too. There's no room for racism. Campaigns by BBC Sport. We don't have to agree on everything. Sky Sports and BT Sport amplified this zero-tolerance line against online hate. Online abuse ruins lives. No yellow cards, no second chances. Hate won't win. All of these actions are a statement of solidarity from the world of football to emphasise that more needs to be done to eradicate hate in the game. Now, no one's suggesting that you shouldn't be able to cheer or jeer at a match. Heightened emotions and a bit of match banter are a huge part of the game for a lot of us. But players, clubs, support groups and fans all agree. A small section of supporters take this too far. Race, homophobic, it shouldn't ever be a factor in sport. Like, it's got nothing to do it's with a it. Game. I do find being female at a football match, you get sort of like lots of, you can get comments and, uh, and people look at you in the wrong way because if you look around, most people here are male. A supporters group from the Premier League club, Norwich City, recently surveyed fans about hate in the game. It was quite clear that even though Things have improved. About 20% of those female fans had uh, been subjected to something within the realms of sexism. I remember incidents in the, in the 80s with fans from certain clubs being quite abusive in my face, directly in my face as a teenage girl at football. Have there been any particular incidents? Quite a few respondents um, mentioned a game back in Norwich a, uh, a couple of seasons ago where Sean Massielis was uh, officiating. She's been a high-profile official in the Premier League since 2010, um, and she came under quite a few direct sexist comments from the crowd and the women um, who, who had mentioned this noticed this and asked their fellow supporters to stop that abuse um, and then themselves came under sexist abuse from, from fans. Norwich City is now making it as easy as possible for fans to report abuse. So there's going to be a dedicated reporting helpline for uh, any fan to report issues of, of sexism or sexist abuse in the stands. Uh, a mobile phone number that people can text where, when they're at the ground. There'll be a safe area in the ground for women to go to if they are feeling threatened. But the abuse doesn't stop at the turnstile. Even the England men's team was subjected to more than 2,000 abusive messages on social media during their first three matches of the Euros. Online is the new battleground for football abuse. I'd like to see a bit more accountability on social media, just in terms of, um, you know, sort of tracking down who is actually making these comments. I'd like to see ID for a coach for Twitter, things like that. Proper passport photos, ID, tri yeah. driving license, things like that. It, so goes just a... it goes past football as well. It's all every kind of online abuse. Jonathan Herschler has been studying online abuse from football fans. He runs Signify, a company which uses artificial intelligence to spot abusive messages online. What we did was we looked at 3,000 abusive posts that we identified and we cross-referenced that across an average stadium of 30,000 fans. And that actually meant 22 incidents 
in every game would have been taking place if it was in the real world. So imagine if 22 incidents going on around you, targeting you personally as a player. You know, fans, it adds up. Well, it does add up, and it, and it really can hit home, and it can have a, a really detrimental effect on you and on your team. Thankfully, Jonathan's team has also started to see the impact of enforcement on abusive tweets. We identified thousands of tweets that were taken down by, uh, by Twitter and by other social platforms. And football clubs are cracking down on abusive fans as well. So if the club sanctions you by taking your season ticket away, um, it can have a real effect on you as a fan. And they've also got some really good educational initiatives in place as well. It's just really holding people accountable, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. The hope is that punishing or holding people to account will stop the hate. But I want to know, what causes it in the first place? Kick It Out is English football's equality and inclusion body. All our data does show is that those growing divisions in the rest of society are playing out in football. What we've seen is societies in the UK and globally have become more divided over the last five to six years. The Home Office's hate crime statistics have shown a rise in hate crime over the last five years, and particularly since the start of the pandemic. Social media has become the battleground of hate. I mean, what can be done to make sure that we, we're trying to fight this online abuse? It's really social media's responsibility to solve the problem of anonymous abusers. Uh, and there needs to be a system that they can be quickly identified and punished because they're, they're hiding behind anonymous accounts and avatars. And then football, we want everyone to make a pledge that when they see it, or they hear it, they'll report it. Sunday is the biggest England football match in many of our lives. Hopefully, with enough of us calling out hate, we can carry on being proud of a sport that does so much to bring us all together. Really powerful film that. I mean, the, the hate is something I've certainly experienced yeah. on, on social media, and it really does need to be stamped out, doesn't it? It does. I, I, I feel already sick in my stomach. We have a comment here from Kathy, and she says, It's time that racism is stamped out. Team rivalry is one thing, but racism and indeed sexism need to be addressed. All bullying, sexism, and racism should be dealt with and dealt with seriously. Yeah, I agree with Kathy yeah. there, absolutely. Whew.